it's healing your body right now. Eko ba shatalo lo bo kosha. Living room, living room, living room, living room, living room. Bedrooms, dinettes. Oh yeah, you can find them at the market. We talking about flea market. Monday. We want. It's healing. Living room, living room, living room, living 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 room. Bedrooms, dinettes. Oh yeah, you can find them at the market. We talking about flea market. Montgomery. It's just like, it's just like a mini mall. Oh yeah, come shop with us. I said flea market, Montgomery. It's just like, it's just like a mini mall. Hey, hey, you heard me. Let's go goddamn ass up. Fast asleep in the bedroom. Now listen to this blue star beat. Lay your body down. Down to next to me. I wanna say What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mag Lessons Radio Show. I'm your host, Mr. Tariq King Flex Nasheed, broadcasting live from Flaw Scandalous, California. And I'm flowing straight from the Survival Scrolls. Glad to have everybody tuning back in to the Mag Lessons Radio Show. Today's show is brought to you by MacLessons.com. That's where you can get the Mac Lessons DVD. And UnitedPlayersOfAmerica.com That's where you can chop up game with other players Such as yourself And it's brought to you by Late Night Special By Pretty Ricky That's what I'm playing in the background A lot of people hate on Pretty Ricky I like Pretty Ricky I probably like them because they're like The only male R&B group that's out You know, I miss that 90's Male R&B group vibe that that used to be popping off back in the day. You don't have any fly R&B groups just breaking down some real player shit no more. You don't have none. The last real thorough group was Jodeci. And they've been talking about doing a comeback for years. We've been waiting on that comeback. It's kind of sad to see like Casey and JoJo perform. And I, I think I talked about this before. Because... KC still think he's sexy And he's a little hot mess right now And he he gets on stage And he tries to do those 1993 Jodeci moves And it just don't work now <laughs> you know, you see, He'd be ripping off that little shirt And that little sickly body Be exposed <laughs> You know Cats now be hitting up the gym You know Niggas be getting all swole So you can't take off your little shirt And your little bird chest and a little wheezy rib cage showing and trying to turn up turn on some bitches that ain't gonna work no more so I hope they get it together get that nigga some some infamil or some protein shakes or something get his weight up but I digress on today's show we're gonna chop up some good game I'm gonna read some listeners emails and flow from the Survivor Scrolls like I always do. Let's start off with the first email. I got an email from a gentleman. And this brother, his name is Deluxe from New York City. What's up, D? He posted this on the um, advice blog on my MySpace page. The email says, I recently caught some of your radio shows and I really enjoy them. I also bought two of your books and they are very good. And don't forget, everybody, I've hardly promoted my books on the show. Don't forget, go pick up my book, The Mac Within, and my book, Player Be Played, Everything That Women Need to Know About Men Dating and Relationships. You can get those books at any bookstore, Barnes & Nobles, Borders, Books A Million, The Swap Meet, um, The Library, The uh, Prison Library, any, anywhere. My book's all over the place. It's not like those Funky Finger Production books that you got to go down to, like, a specialty place to get You can only get them on the streets of Harlem You can get my books at any bookstore And you go to Amazon.com But I digress Anyway the email goes on to say I'm the kind of person Who's really cool and I'm mellow 
I don't get overly excited unless I'm with my partners cracking jokes, watching the game, etc. Other than that, when I'm dealing with women, I'm pretty laid back and I'm pretty cool. And you know most women love for you to show emotion and reactions to stuff. The email goes on to say, The last couple of women I dealt with said something that kind of made me wonder. They said they felt if I stopped dating them right then, that I wouldn't even care. It kind of bothered me that they thought that, but when I thought about the statement, it was kind of true because I probably would stop talking to them and not miss a beat. And the email goes on to say, I did care for them, but I guess I didn't express it as much as they would like. Sometimes I feel that I could have been a pimp. Laugh out loud. So anyway, I want to know, what's your opinion on the situation? Do I need to show more emotion? Or how should I be able to show it to a woman that I'm interested in her and I'm feeling her without seeming too emotional? Thanks a lot. Now, I got a two-part answer to that. Now, you're doing the right thing. You don't have to show emotion and, and be brown-nosing and kissing ass all the time. As a Mac, you want to stay mellow. You want to stay pretty nonchalant. You don't want to show your, your hold cards. Life is like poker. You don't want to show every hand you have. Women don't show all their hands. You don't have to show all your hands. So you're good at playing it mellow. Now, the second part to that question is that the female shouldn't even be asking you no shit like that and here's why that's what I call an idle mind question that's one of those what if scenarios that women ask you when they get bored you ever been kicking it with a woman guys and they ask you some shit what if I was in an accident would you still love me what if I fell off a building what if uh, all that what if shit is idle mind chatter idle chatter is not in the max repertoire you're supposed to keep a female so busy and preoccupied with handling business and handling your chores she don't have time to ask you little nonsense like that would I care about her if I broke up with her that's an idle bullshit ass question it means nothing it's just something she thought of just because she was bored and that's the thing man the way to not keep women bored is to give them chores and somebody else sent me an email and I'm going to build on that how do you keep a woman occupied what type of chores do you give women what kind of tangibles do you make women bring to the table because I always talk about men making women bring stuff to the table and how important that is there's a lot of things a woman can bring to the table and there's a lot of chores you can give women. Money is the main thing. Number two, and I've, I've talked about this before, a woman can take you out on dates since they're so independent. She can take a nigga to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles or, or Red Lobster or goddamn um, Mr. Chow's or the um, Olive Garden or wherever. Also, a woman can cook you can have a woman come over to your house and clean. Find out what type of skills the woman has. Whatever skills she has, make her bring that skill to the table. If she's good with computers, have her work on some computer stuff. If you're in school, have her help you out with your schoolwork. If you have a business, have her answer phones or take memos or, or make calls for you. Have that woman doing something so her mind won't be fixated on idle chatter. You got to keep a woman occupied and they want to be occupied. This isn't a negative thing on the women's part. Women know what I'm talking about. A woman likes a man who gives her chores and tasks. A woman wants to be with a man who's building something with her. She wants to be a part of something. You understand that, fellas? That's why when women get bored, they sit up and just think of idle bullshit. Their mind is always going. It's like a little hamster running on a wheel. You got to give her some kind of direction. And I know this may sound chauvinistic, but the women know exactly what I'm talking about. You feel me, fellas? So don't engage in that idle chatter. When your woman starts giving you idle chatter, that means it's time for you to give her more chores. You understand that? And a lot of youngsters, your youngins, 
because you guys are just so happy that you got a bra laying up under you, you allow the idle chatter. Charge that idle chatter to the game. Give her ass chores immediately. All right, let me check out some other emails. Got an email. And I get this email a lot, this type of email. People ask me the same thing. Tariq, what's the best way to step to East Indian females? I heard all your shows about interracial dating, and I heard the interracial macking week shows, but you really didn't touch on East Indian females. What's the best way to get at these women? Now, first of all, I, I've gotten several emails asking me this. Where are you guys meeting all these East Indian women? The reason I didn't go into that on the um, interracial macking show, the interracial macking week, is because there are so few East Indian women that's in the dating arena because most of those women have arranged type marriages. So it's very rare to even get up on one of those one of those women. Also, a lot of those East Indian women, man, what's funny to me, a lot of Indian people are racist. And them motherfuckers are blacker than Wesley Snipes. That's very ironic. They're very racist against American black people. There's a lot of negative stigmas and a, a, a lot of negative stereotypes that they have about American blacks. But them motherfuckers are chocolate as hell and they over there with rats and shit running all over the place which I find extremely ironic also a lot of Indian women to me and I really didn't put that much thought into Mac into them because a lot of them have cute faces but they don't have no ass and they be having them big old ashy feet not to stereotype but I've yet to see an East Indian woman with ass them women are ass free Every East Indian woman I see, they owe ass. But, hey, if you find one you want to spit at, man, who's here in America, who's not on some arranged marriage shit, you have to deal with her based on the community she lives in. If she lives in a black community, which is rare, you're going to have to deal with it like you would deal with a black chick. And I talked about this before. If she lives in a white community, you would have to deal with her as if you were dealing with a white girl. Hell, and if all else fails, shit, just invite one over to your house and just put some of this music right here on. Shit, just put this on ass. Hold on. Put that on right here. Bump this for her. Feel like that. Yeah, put that on there and then slide them drawers off and see what she does. But you're going to have to put on some tight leather pants. Anyway. Anyway. That's enough of that. That's enough of that shit. Any fart. But that's how you step to these women. That's how you step to them if you meet one. Which I haven't met too many East Indian women. Again, a lot of those women have those arranged marriages. And they they grow up in like racist society. They, they're very racist against brothers. So, not all of them. And I, again, I'm kind of stereotyping and generalizing. Not all of them. But a lot of them are. So, I don't. it's not even worth your time. And Send me an email, guys, telling me where you're meeting all these East Indian women. I'm dying to know where you're meeting these East Indian these women I, I i don't see a whole abundance of them and the ones at 7-eleven they be having fucked up attitudes as far as i'm concerned so fuck them not all of them but fuck them but i digress let me see what other email i got i got another email and this was off my united plays of america.com message board and this is a very deep email This email says, this is a question regarding respect in the household. The problem is, my sisters, my younger sisters, don't have any respect for the men in my family. This is due 
in part to my mother who has always had a habit of talking disrespectful shit about me or my father every time she has a falling out with one of us. She's been doing this ever since we were kids. She also gets my sisters together so they can talk crazy shit about me and my father every time she gets into it with one of us. She manages to persuade them and they've been falling for this ever since I can remember. Now, when I was younger, my father was an alcoholic and he would beat my mother if he felt disrespected by her. He gave up drinking a few years ago and he's been teaching me a lot of game and I respect my father and he teaches me a lot about taking care of business and finances, etc. However, my father has let my mother and my sisters walk all over him since he decided to, to quit drinking. And let me stop for a minute. See, dad was using that alcohol as a courage thing. He was getting him some liquid courage and he was putting the Mac down. See, a lot of guys, man, they, they use that alcohol to build up confidence. And he was checking that wife when he shouldn't have, you know, been whooping ass unless, you know, I don't know if she deserved it or not. But alcohol beatings aren't really the best beatings. You know, he can just fly off the wire for any minute. But the email goes on to say, I know that a Mac must always use his mouthpiece and persuasion to check a woman, but my sisters and mothers and my, my sisters and mother have taken advantage of the fact that my father works long hours to bring in the money for the family and he is too tired to even put up with their shit. Now, my father has told me that if something were to happen to him one day, that my mother would be in charge, but he has his doubts and he told me that I would more likely be left in charge of the finances to take care of the household. Basically, I'm just trying to get my mother and sister to start giving respect if they want respect from me. Because they have the mentality the they have the mentality that they're going to get respect no matter what because they're female, and that's just fucked up. I really want to shape the females up in my household since they're my family, but their attitudes make it hard for any type of progress to be made with them. What should I do? Very good email. I've talked about this a hundred times about the type of disrespect that black women have for black men. It's just so blatant. It's so prevalent. And men, you have to check it early. You have to check that early, early, early. There's a collective lack of respect that a lot of black women have for black men. A lot of black women like testing guys. All the time is a test. When you get to a certain age and you get to a certain mentality, you have to let women know that I, I'm out of school. I don't take tests no more. Don't even test me. If you're going to keep trying to test me, I'm going to charge your ass to the game. Fellas, as a Mac, you cannot allow any type of disrespect to go on whatsoever. If that means not messing with certain women, black women especially, so be it. Because that's the main problem that a lot of guys have in the dating arena, especially black men. A lot of black men want to date sisters, but a lot of black men in their right minds are not going to be disrespected. And a lot of sisters have this thing where they're just going to disrespect brothers because that's all they know. This is why a lot of black women are not getting married. And I've touched on this a million times and I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. And fellas, you have to check these women early. If fellas would start checking women, would, if fellas did it collectively, I think it would cease. But there are so many simp-ass niggas out here that will allow women to disrespect them. They feel like they can do it to anybody. And then they end up sadly mistaken. And usually it's these older broads. The older broads teach the younger broads. And you just have to check it. That's why you got to take your sisters in doses. You can't hang around a whole bunch of sisters. I was talking about this this weekend. I take my black women in doses. I can't have a whole gang of y'all around because if there's a is there about if there's about three or more black women around, somebody's gonna try some disrespectful shit. That's real talk. 
I went out with a lady friend of mine this weekend. I have a lady friend. She's an actress out here in L.A. And we kick it. We kick it all the time. And we went to an event, a uh, red carpet event in Hollywood the other day. Because, you know, they had Fashion Week out here in L.A., for those who don't know. And there's a lot of events going on. And um, we rolled up to the spot. She wanted me to roll up to this spot with her. And she brought one of her friends with her. This other black broad in her 30s. And y'all know how I feel about them. And the chick was on some old Hollywood shit. I just didn't like her friend. I didn't like her vibe. I didn't like her goddamn vibe at all. She had this kind of diva-esque vibe like she was just that bitch when she really wasn't. And that just rubbed me the wrong way. And we went to this event in Hollywood and um, they wanted to take some pictures on the red carpet. And my homegirl's friend was like, hey, Tariq, can you hold my coat? Now, some of you simp-ass niggas would have went for that. But I'm not no simp-ass nigga. And I told her, hell no, I'm not holding your coat. I'm not no coat holder. And she was like, oh, damn, what's the big deal? There's no big deal. I'm not a coat holder. I don't hold coats. Now, some people might think that I've, I reacted overboard with that. I don't think so. Don't ask me to hold no goddamn coat. The fuck I look like Benson? See, little shit like that, that was a test just to see how far she can get away with shit with me. That's how I look at it. It's not as innocent as it looked. And I'll tell you why. Women, they know where to hold their coats and their purses when they go out. If I wasn't around, what was she going to do with the coat? You feel what I'm saying? Just like fellas, when you go to the mall and women be like, Ooh, can you hold my purse? You say, hell fucking no, I'm not holding your purse. Women will test you with that, fellas. Feel me on this. You hang out with your woman and they try to make you hold a purse. That's a test, man. Don't hold that purse. That is a test. Don't hold her purse. Don't hold her coat. They just want to see how submissive you can be. Women go to the mall all the time by themselves. They know how to hold their own goddamn purse. They know how to put their purse up and try on clothes. You feel me, fellas? So that's why I feel like I didn't overreact when I told old girl, I'm not holding your coat. Put that shit in your bag or leave it in the car. That's what I mean. You have to check all that stuff. You have to check it when it's subtle because a lot of times women will do it in a subtle way and if they get an inch they'll try to take a mile you feel me so you have to check all that shit immediately anyway I'm going to get into the Mac rants right now as you know at the end of the shows now I'm going to do a little Mac rant get a few things off my chest about what's going on out here in society what's going out here in the game now Mac rant number one I have a message for all you brothers out there all the young black men out there stop coming up to me at gas stations and outside the club trying to sell me your whack ass CDs I'm tired of it I don't want to buy your bootleg whack ass CD. There's a reason why your ass ain't signed. Most of the cats who be trying to sell their little bootleg CD on the streets, the shit is garbage. Please stop coming up to my car with that. I don't want to buy no CD from the Pound Cake Gangsters or whatever the fuck your name is. Get away from my car, player. Holla. Mac rant number two. Message to the sisters out there. Especially the young sisters. Stop lying about your ethnicity. That's a big problem in the black, young black female community. Stop lying about your ethnicity. Just because you can put jail on your weave, that does not make you Puerto Rican. You're just a bitch with a gang of less jam in your hair. So stop sleeking, stop slicking down the baby hair telling everybody you're Dominican. You're a black bitch from Cleveland. 
Let's keep it real. And finally, everybody, Mac rant number three. The message for all you women who drive around in the hood. Women who drive around in in the hood, please stop putting stuffed animals in the back of your car window, especially when you have a raggedy ass car. That shit is not cute. You driving around in a 92 Nissan Maxima with a gang of beanie babies in the back goddamn window. That's not cute. Tickle Me Elmo is sitting in the window holding a ransom note talking about get me away from this bitch. That's not cute. Stop doing that. Anyway, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I'm your host, Mr. Tariq King Flex Nasheed. It's been a ball chopping up game with all you players and playettes. Tune in for tomorrow's show. We're going to chop up some more good game. Don't forget to check out MacLessons.com. Don't forget to get that DVD. Don't forget to get Player Be Played, the book. Don't forget to get the Mac Within, the book. I'm going to holler at you. Peace. Living room, bedrooms, dinettes. Oh, oh yeah. You can find them at the market. We talking about flea market. Montgomery. It's just like, it's just like a mini mall. Mini mall.